Well, uh, welcome back. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the patience you showed. Um, actually, I'm I'm going to start this uh, part. Actually, I just took break on 12:25 p.m. and it took me. Uh, I mean, just to reset. Actually, your the first part of the lecture. I'm going to start it actually now. It uh, 12 uh, 5 9 p.m. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about on acquisitions. Uh, if you remember, we uh, had talked about acquisitions in detail before, but still we have to repeat the same, you know, um, I mean, thoughts again and again in order to know them. Uh, you know, here, uh, the learning of a native or first language is called first language acquisition. Very simplest definitions, you know, very simplest definition. Uh, you see here that the language, uh, you know, the language uh, that is actually um, the which a person learns uh, first is called is first language acquisition. It is also remember, it is also called developmental psycholinguistics remember you must remember this thing okay so you should try to focus on it uh, it is just uh, it is just one stain of psycholinguistic which is all about how people see that how people to speak right and the mental processes involved in the act of speaking well, psycho, uh, for example, uh, in more simple words, psycholinguistics, you know, focuses on how do people speak and what are the mental processes involved actually in, in the act of speaking. So this is one strain of psycholinguistics, remember, right? You, you, you must remember uh, uh, this point, how do people speak and Remember, this is uh, uh, point number one, all right? Point number one, and this is point number two. Uh, point number two, that what mental processes are involved actually in the act of speaking, right? So try to understand this. Uh, second uh, point we are going to be taught. Are we taught to speak by our parents? Baba. Are we born with knowledge in our brains that help us to pick up language quickly so uh, any other questions that actually deal uh, is dealt with uh, within the sphere of psycholinguistic that are we taught to speak by our parents or are we born with knowledge in our brains that help us to pick up language quickly so this there is a great discussion that uh, is it our parents that teach us language or there is something in our mind that you know that makes us to Language, to pick up language more clearly so obviously there is discussion on it um, parents uh, feedback uh, I mean is also there but we uh, we acquire language we normally do not learn that language you see from someone all right so uh, here if, if this is the case that uh, uh, in, in fact um, who actually teaches us do are we equipped with a system that make us to acquire languages so this is really a, a question of remember nature versus nurture uh, I, I think you must have heard these two terms actually nature means uh, that which comes from nature and we are born with a nurture means that surrounding and that how do we learn and pick up things you see in the surrounding uh, now we move on to nature and nurture. All right, Noam Chomsky. He was the person that we. He he was the person that we are actually. Uh, endowed with. We are you know genetically uh, uh, pre-wired to have a system. All right, nature. All right, uh, we have no role in that, but we, uh, you know, we are giving that. Chomsky believes that we have pre-wired structure in our brains all right we have what pre-wired structure means we are born with that 
which help us to have advanced knowledge about language and noun is atavism and that is term is atavism okay uh, what it means that we have pre wired means here we have a pre wired structure and which help us to have advanced knowledge about language and that is term atavism all right uh, further he says the children look for regular pattern and speech and use these is rule to work out new word tenses such as applying the past tense every word ending with ed all right this is another uh, idea of chomsky which he says that children they they do they they look at actually for regular pattern in speech all right and then they uh, try to use it while uh, michael tamasilo who is a, an uh, the supporter of nurture he believes that children acquire language first and foremost by understanding how others how others use language means uh, here he means that actually ch children look at others how do they use language and uh, is imitation they pick up the language all right uh, then we have uh, another um, scholar b f skinner um, whose verbal behaviors i mean really revolutionize i mean other scholars to talk and do works and actually in language there uh here later chomsky believes that we are born with switches in our brain all right we have got switches and we keep on uh, you know keep on shifting switches from it like for example we have a system actually that is is vivo for english is vivo means a subject subject right subject is vivo subject then verb and then object object i mean we have structure we have switches actually in our mind for this structure is the vivo structure but similarly turkish in turkish you see the subject verb arrangement is this is vivo so we have also the same structure over there so we we keep on switching you see there uh, i mean in our mind while um, b if scanner um, research comes under the term behaviorism this is highly uh, psychological terms behaviorism you know which may be familiar to studying psychology all right and he says and his belief is that children learn language through their parents and other sibling around them so in simple uh, he means that language learning comes through environment language environment huh? so uh, here my dear student uh, b f skinner he thinks that language uh, learning comes through environment so you have parents and siblings around you their environment you hear them you see them you look at them and you learn the language right this is actually the man's take of pierre skinner and behaviorism uh you know these were actually the man differences there uh but i think uh, both i mean uh, both school of thought have contributions to mac but however the modern and actually the expert the uh, uh, stress more on chomsky well uh some basic notions in the first language positions uh the first one that is over generalization and then we have under under generalizations okay so try to understand these two term over generalization means that the extension it simply means this 
remember the extension of a rule beyond its proper limits like for example you do not have you have a limits actually for a rule but you go out beyond the limits and you use that rule there for example as frequent phenomenon in language development it can be found not only in syntactic syntactic usage but can also be seen in word meaning as well for example if a child initially if he learns i mean uh, the word moon so moon is actually around around you know uh, around uh, object uh, we can say it is round in shape so then that child then over generalize over generalizes that moon that the term moon for all round things you understand i mean the the child for example he uh, in pashto we say bow for example when when we talk about um, different things like animals that thing like this you see to a child so we uh, perceptually i mean look and point at that thing like for example if we see a buffalo or a donkey or a, i mean or any 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 other animal so we try to point it out with a special you see uh, observation of a child and we point towards that animal and we call that in pashto bow over there bow so when actually the child i mean goes through i mean the developmental you know language developmental processes so when he sees another animal so uh, he or uh, she i mean says bow so this is actually over generalizations you over generalize a term like cars for our vehicles like i mean the and dogs for all legged animals like this you hear so this this is over generalizing and then under generalization remember what this under when a child uses actually a word in more limited way remember in more limited way remember in restricted and limited way then it is to this phenomenon so this phenomenon then is called under generalizations all right means uh, in over generalizations you use a particular word of expression of phrase you see for a number of other objects related to that for example uh, for example if you see buffalo but a child knows i mean initially a term dog so he will extend the term dog for all the animals like uh, i mean car you can you can over generalize and extend the car to all other vehicles and similarly for example if a child sees shoes so only by this shoes he means to his mother shoes he doesn't actually over generalize but he use the word actually for his mother's shoes only i hope you understand uh, under generalization okay uh, there are certain reason i'll be because the lecture is too long so i'll be uh, quickly moving there all right uh, what are the reasons uh, which are used actually for uh, uh, on some occasions children conceptual categories differ from adults of uh, what uh, because uh, differences in conceptual uh, categories of children and adults right so therefore they try to actually use uh, these uh, two categories on another occasion they may know perfectly well that a cow is not a dog but not know what is called uh, sometime it is all uh, sometime a child the children they may they, they 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 know the fact that the cow is not a dog right uh, he understand this but unfortunately he doesn't have actually another word for cow therefore uh, actually he makes use of the word dog even for cow you understand and on still another occasion the children misuse of words may reflects in attempt or humor right um, for example if children uh, uh, the f misuse of actually words so they may reflect either uh, i mean it, it, it attempt uh, to humorize the things all right this may also be the reasons all right uh and now we move to second language acquisition uh, my dear students um 
Well, uh, I, I think if you remember that we will be using first language acquisition, SLA and FLA, these terms, they will come again and again in order to have some grip and understanding upon the concept of, uh, I mean, psycholinguistic and second acquisition in this. Uh, remember, I redefine it actually for you people. Um, see here, um, second language acquisitions, remember, this is the process by which people learn a second language. Remember, second language is also term is L2, all right? And this research focuses on developing knowledge and use of children and adults who already know at least one other languages, all right? Uh, then uh, we have actually our uh, theories of second language. We will, uh, if time permits, you know, and we cover, I mean, the basic topics are actually of uh, second language acquisition. We will be also talking about theories of second language learning. Uh, then we have universal grammar. Uh, is, you know, that the concept of universal grammar is given by Chomsky. And he described this theory is knowledge. Remember, he acknowledged that people are born with. We are born with actually this universal grammar. Nobody teaches us that. Basically, basically skill of knowledge people already have without being taught. And that is actually called universal grammar. Right. In simple terms, I mean, we have a system. We have a grammar. We have monitored it. Uh, corrects our edits. You know language there, and then, uh, my dear, uh, you must be uh, f you must be familiar with the term monitor theory. Monitor means that it has something to monitor. All right, uh, check means monitor means to check to have a check on something. All right, this point of theory is to note is to note what see here is to note. The, dif the differences between acquisitions and learning. You have to, you have to understand actually these two terms. Acquisition that is something very automatic. You know that comes. Uh, that is something automatic uh, that comes actually um, automatically. Nobody has any role in that. While learning is something conscious. You have to make deliberate effort in order to learn. Uh, acquisition has a hypothesizes means thought to occur in a in a manner similar to first language uh, acquisitions. Remember, learning is described as a conscious process, one in which the learner's attention is directed to rules uh, and form. So uh, you know, uh, as I said, that learning is a, a conscious effort on the part of learner, and he has to make. Uh, certain efforts and he is to be directed uh, for understanding rules in form of the language well uh, acquisition that is quite automatic that is quite uh, you know naturally happening thing uh, now uh, dear students uh, we have to move actually uh, a little bit this term uh, we will inshallah discuss this in detail as well but we have to move to this term behaviorism. All right. Basically, if you look, um, psychology was dominated, and second language learning and teaching, you know, were dominated by this concept behaviorism, and it was based. What was this behaviorism? Remember, this was based on the view. So, what was the view of be of behaviorism? That all you have to focus on this. In all learning. All learning, including language learning, occurs through through a process of number one, imitations. This is point number one. They say that all learning, which even includes language learning, all this comes through a process of imitation. You have to imitate. You have to look at others. Uh, how do they perform that? How do they do it? And this, and then practice. All right, that uh, when you imitate something, when you look at somebody that somebody is doing something, then you have to practice that yourself. And then reinforcement, all right, reinforcement and habit formations. So uh, 
if you look at this uh, emutations right emutation um, practice all right practice and then uh, you see uh, reinforcement reinforcement mean that you either punish or you actually give some price I mean to someone for something and then actually uh, habit formations and this if you practice and if you do thing again and again so that would become your habit so a habit uh, for uh, a habit formation but um, I mean this theory uh, is actually uh, this theory I mean is, is uh, challenged because mostly the experiments were done on animals all right and uh, psychologists like Pavlo and many others I mean they carried out experiments on animals so therefore and then the experiments and the findings which came as a result of experimentations on animal you know they were over generalized and they were actually linked with the language as well uh, and now another term that is cognitive psychology cognitive psychology uh, cognitive psychology uh, psychologists hypothesize that second language acquisition like other learning requires the learning attention and effort so like any other learning uh, I mean a second language learning also actually requires requires uh, you know the attentions of uh, learners and their effort as well while some other theories suggested that language is first remember acquired through intentional learning of what is called declarative all right declarative knowledge um, I have to explain this uh, declarative knowledge uh, to you people um, so I'm taking you back to your folder here uh, here declarative knowledge uh, which which is not uh, which is not opening there so I'm going to explain this declarative knowledge to you people here what is this declarative knowledge uh, but unfortunately I have so many uh, videos on there so therefore it it, uh, it becomes a little bit difficult um, so here declarative uh, knowledge uh, this uh, document in which I when I was preparing it so I have uh, I have actually uh, 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 here uh, you see uh, in the last lecture which was not op uh, which was not opening there actually um, uh, m my continuous because there I cannot make marks there so uh, my dear student um, you see here uh, the trick I, I missed a term recursion that which is used in Chomsky I explain it but explain it again for you people uh, this term recursion is a linguistic property whereby phrases may be continuously embedded into other phrases I mean for example there is a rule there is a word there is something which is used in one sentence in one way but the same thing it can be differently used in other sentences and phrases so that is actually recursed that is revised again and again so Chomsky believes that recursion is a fundamental uh, here you see uh, uh, Chomsky uh, he says that uh, believes that recursion is a fundamental cognitive pro uh, property of language a part of human universal grammar that is responsible for the rapid acquisition of language I hope you understand it now because I quote actually uh, a certain thing there I uh, you know I have entered the same actually um, explanations of this term um, uh, the same explanation these uh, terms in order to explain them but which unfortunately do not open there so I explain you people here uh, uh, these so uh, I'm, I'm saying that declarative knowledge declarative knowledge refers to facts or information stored in the memory all right um, 
that is considered static in nature. Declarative knowledge also referred is conceptual, propositional or descriptive knowledge which describes things even and processes and their attributes and their relationship to each other but which is actually where which is which is con uh, conceptual which is here propositional or descriptive knowledge which this uh, you know describe things and which come from there while uh, here we have propositional again procedural knowledge remember declarative knowledge is conscious all right it can often be verbalized Procedural knowledge involves knowing how to do something like uh, declar declar you can find actually a declar dec declarative knowledge somewhere it is in store you can you can you, you, you maybe have that there right but uh, unfortunately uh, here uh, you, you find declarative knowledge is oh sorry uh, okay and uh, sorry uh, I'm sorry uh, there is a little bit mistake here uh, I'm, I'm trying all right so declarative while procedural involves knowing how to do something procedural means it enables you how to do something all right we may not be able to explain how do that huh? right so uh, we may not be able to explain how do we do it all right and uh, uh, i i just move you again actually to that lecture um, which is uh, here right this was explained hope that you understand it and then we have enter enter and in integrationist uh, perspective all right well, this theory explained the ongoing use of language and gestures in anticipation of how the other will react in a conversation. So, l look, the focus is ongoing use of language and the gestures in anticipation of how the other, uh, the other, um, the other react in a conversation. All right. So it's not only the speaker's reaction, but also the listening. So it means both the speakers and the uh, listener, you know, they are involved in it. Okay. So, uh, so my dear, uh, you will find it here. Um, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit quick. Instruction and second language uh, uh, acquisition. Research shows that instruction can have a significant effect on second language acquisition, at least in terms of the rate of learning. All right, and the long-term success that learners achieve in using the language accurately. While in the context of communicative interaction, learners seems to be able to benefit more from instructions, more from instruction, and error feedback, which focus on the semantic or lexical errors. Then from that which targets syntactic errors. All right. So means that instructions it has a definite role there in language learning. All right. Uh, and moreover, uh, which has been explained here, you 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 find here. Uh, but there are certain factors which uh, w in learning and acquisition as well. I mean, these individual factors. Uh, they are uh, you see age, uh, personality motivations and experiences and cognition these factors that uh, do have I mean a role to play so let's see and just look at them age um, obviously age has important role to play second language acquisition is influenced by the age of learner all right uh, obviously a children with solid literacy skill in their own language seems to be in the best position to acquire a new language efficiently while adults i mean they find it very difficult similarly personality i mean introvert introverted introverted means that uh, 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 stu i mean people who do not mix up with other people openly they try to live uh, i mean within own world they do not try to mix up you see with other people all right 
or we can say anxious learner like I mean anxious means learner uh, they, they normally make slower progress right particularly in the development of oral skill they are less likely to take opportunity to speak so they will take risk and this will give themselves much more uh, you know practice it, me it means that in, uh, I, I mean reticent reticence means uh, that uh, mostly all the time that they, they try to remain silent are tasty turn tasty reticence are tasty turn they are the two sign animals term which can be used for silent uh, speakers are do not who do not take actually um, I mean participations in discussions there all right uh, they, they, their progress may be so in experiment experiences learners who have acquired general knowledge and experience are in a stronger position to develop a new language than those who haven't. So obviously uh, those learners who are exposed more to the world knowledge are who are actually ex ex who are experiences are who experience many things more than others they are in a stronger position. Then another term that is actually motivation. Motivations, uh, we have two kinds of motivations. Uh, you see, uh, intrinsic motivations and extrinsic motivations. Um, uh, I mean, intrinsic motivations uh, that comes from from inside of an individual. Uh, it doesn't come actually from uh, internal um, from in, in internal um, environment. Uh, from external environment, you know, it comes from within. While extrinsic motivations, it refers that comes from outside. The motivating factors uh, such as money or grades, these rewards provide satisfactions and pleasure, and thus the task itself may not provide it. So these these uh, may do. For example, internally, if you are strong, and internally, if something pricks you for something. Uh, for something um, achievement, you know, so it may work. But sometimes uh, even external motivations they can also be there. Well, cognitions. Um, well, uh, but before that, they have given an example. How much would would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I mean, just a kind of time time st structure. I mean, and uh, sometimes the cognition is there. So such difficult sentences are hardly cognitively uh, processed, you know, there. Like, uh, for example, it makes you, it's like a tense crystal, you know. How much would, would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? Chuck means the uh, wood chuck, this is a kind of animal, right? And it, uh, and it actually moves actually the wood there. Chuck means uh, its general meaning as to dismiss. Uh, or reject something, I mean, quickly uh, repeal something. Well, here, Ucha, you can uh, see there. Uh, I, I think let me uh, let, let me take you uh, actually to show you this uh, through this Google um, because I am also connected to the net now. So let me uh, just uh, check this through, I mean, check this through, through the Google. Um, Google, which is the biggest master, you know, and I hope that you will understand this uh, here. Uh, internet speed you see is quite low here in our part as well. Uh, but you people are all the time keep complaining, you know, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, sir, we do not have internet uh, and this and that. So here. But similar is the case with us, but we have uh, got uh, no option. So uh, here um, you can find, I mean, I'm showing this to you people, right? Uh, this is actually uh, that animal that I just named it, you know, Uchak. And uh, it uh, does actually, um, you know, that work of chucking, in fact. So uh, you, you can see the speed of my internet, though I have installed 6 MB internet. But now see, you see here the speed of the 6 MB there. All right. So therefore, uh, this is uh, this is also called as Uche Groundhog. All right. And this is the detail of, uh, you know, this Groundhog. Uh, you can um, 
still read are one of the 14 species of marmotus and you know groundhog day uh, in its habitat reproductions i'm just uh, showing it for your reading sakes and uh, for your reading sake you know so just go through this and behavior and diet well thank you very much this was enough for this you know so i uh, just explain this to you people all right uh, we are going basically talking about cognition you know this cognition in general it seemed that student with greater cognitive ability will make the faster progress I mean you have greater cognitive uh, uh, I mean abilities so you will make fast progress uh, some linguists uh, believe that there is a specific remember there is a specific innate language learning ability that is stronger in some students than others so in simple term it means that those who have greater cognitive ability will make faster progress and then we have some effective factors uh, you know effective factors which are emotional factors which influence the learning all right so uh, inhibitions uh, we have self-esteem inhibitions risk-taking anxiety and empathy uh, these are actually the factors which make, uh, I mean, uh, your language, uh, which influence your learning as well. All right. Like, for example, if you give somebody self-esteem, you know, so self-esteem means that you do not hurt. His or her feelings. All right. So, um, then, uh, obviously, uh, there will be, um, I mean, uh, no... Uh, there will be much progress you see in learning language mm -hmm. or any other skill for example self-esteem that is the best esteem you know so every teacher every instructor has to give at even parent have to give the self-esteem to their children as well and inhibitions let me take uh, to a uh, to its uh, just a particular term uh, you see inhibitions remember i have even explained this inhibitions here the inhibition that is a feeling that makes one self-conscious and unable to act in a relaxed in a natural way for example if you become conscious like i am now uh, i'm a bit conscious here actually because i'm recording my lecture through screen because everything will be recorded so i'm i'm i'm, I'm a bit conscious here rather uh, and because my this consciousness may makes me nervous and it may uh, because everything is being recorded so I, I, I uh, during the class we may not we, we may not may uh, we may not be that much conscious you know but whatever comes to our mind we see that but when you become a screen uh, when you when you become available before the screen you know, it makes you more conscious so consciousness you know this in this inhibition it means the feeling that it makes some self one conscious you know and which makes one unable to act in a relaxed or in a natural way. So the children at first means we can say that shyness. Uh, similar words can use, uh, you know, uh, shyness, uh, reticence, self-consciousness. These are actually the word there. Right. So obviously um, this inhibitions, you know, obviously uh, I think we should do something in order to overcome the shyness in inhibition of children. For better uh, I mean for better learning all right uh, and even risk taking uh, sometimes we have to keep normally in my class I do uh, I do give chance I mean to my student to say whatever comes into a man and at least they should take uh, they, they should take uh, risk in order to become effective learners and if they do not take this they should really um, be very difficult and anxiety mm -hmm. I mean the anxiety normally these are effect effect to which really affect the learning you know um, so obviously um, we have to overcome the anxiety because when you when you enter uh, the class with 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 a load of anxiety in your mind you know so this would obviously affect your learning I mean the anxiety uh, I mean the anxiety it has to be it has to be um, you know 
overcome. We should try to overcome. We should we should keep this thing in mind that this is just I mean language learning uh, maybe just you see uh, difficult, but it's not impossible. It, it it's not going to kill me there. It's it's not something that which cannot be achieved. You know we have to you know we have to uh, min minimize our insight. We sh we should try to to be psychologically more powerful. You know. Uh, against all kind of inhibitions and you know risk taking and anxiety and thing like this so I think if we just look at uh, these thing you know so our learning will become more effective there try to keep your anxiety aside all right and try to take uh, uh, risk for the I, I mean nobody is going to kill you at least for example I mean we have to keep this thing in mind the, if I commit a mistake Nobody is going to hang me for that. And if you are if you are looking at second language, so this is not our mother tongue. So therefore, we have to uh, we have to make mistakes. You know, forget about it. And then we have an, another uh, uh, I mean another term that is empathy. I'm going to explain this um, right. Emotion researcher generally define empathy is the ability to sense other people emotions coupled with the ability to imagine what someone else might be thinking or feeling cognitive empathy sometimes called perspective taking cognitive empathy means sometimes called perspective perspective taking it refers to our ability to identify or understand others feelings all right so i think if we um I mean, just take of this, you know, believe me, learning will become more effective and that would help a great deal. Um, so, we uh, effective factor uh, are emotional factor which influence learning. For example, if a student has self-esteem, for example, if I ask a student to stand up and even if he says something, you know, which is not up to the mark, but I should not try to say uh, just to hurt his self-esteem because if once his self-esteem is hurt so I mean it would take longer to restore his self-esteem in that particular class and th the level of you know his um, uh, depression and the level of his non-participatory approach will develop and this would obviously affect his learning so self-esteem needs to be restored and it, 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 it should not be I mean the self-esteem should not be hard but rather the self-esteem it has to be increased and it has to be strengthening with the time and by this way if you try to I mean value somebody's views you know in a uh, language learning class believe me this would if this would work very effectively for others as well I mean restoring are maintaining and strengthening of a single individual self-esteem guarantees the esteem of the whole class because they indirectly are learning and looking at it your behavior I mean instructor behavior so they will also come forward so encouragement of self-esteem in a given class is encouragement to restore and to strengthen the self-esteem of other as well and this inhibitions I mean uh, uh, we should try to, I mean, the shyness, I mean, and, and, and the feeling of uh, fear, it should be overcome. And the student, they must take um, a risk and the anxiety should be overcome. And the empathy that we have to understand the feelings of other, And this would obviously uh, be uh, grateful. So I'm coming uh, again here. So these uh, four these five uh, things they have to be uh, properly taken care of and this would obviously I mean uh, be uh, effective remember effective uh, these would be uh, effective you know effective um, steps um, uh, effective uh, steps you see for uh, language learning so I hope that you understand it we have to move on um, because uh, then we have to uh, first and second language acquisition. I think uh, similarities uh, have been um, just given to you people there. Uh, but I, I, I have even shown you, uh, I mean, uh, set order basically in first language and second language. There is a set order. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you here in order just uh, for the sake of, um, I mean, for the sake of uh, actually uh, remembrance, reminiscence, uh, see here uh, there are actually uh, 
there are basically you see six stages in child first language acquisitions namely you see here I just if you remember I uh, told you that then pre pre taking uh, pre talking stage all right uh, the first stage that is pre talking stage are I uh, saved you I, I told you cooing and this is start from zero to six months all right and then we have actually the babbling stage you see here the babbling stage which start from six to eight months all right and then I even told you that holophrostic stage uh, is there like uh, you see holo uh, holophrostic eh? see uh, which starts from nine to what to 18 months all right, all right? Uh, and then we have two world stage all right two world stage that start actually from 18 to 24 months and then we have telegraphic stage I told you uh, telegraphic stage you know that is uh, 24 to 30 months and later on then we have a multi uh, I mean a multi world stage uh, that actually uh, starts from uh, 30 months to onwards all right so uh, uh, I just explain you people the basic similarity of first language second language uh, both second and first language acquisitions uh, I mean in both first and second language uh, errors is a part of learning um, I mean this uh, I have uh, I have read a book that is how languages are learned so this was written I think by Chomsky and he said that basically the you know that making mistakes and errors right for learning language is improvement because that uh, for example if a child remains silent and doesn't either speak or make mistake how come the instructor will know uh, that uh, he or she can speak language by speaking language even incorrectly and making mistakes you know it indicates that there is a uh, actually uh, improvement for example, a learner may start out using the correct form of an irregular work is part of a language chunk, but later overgeneralize in place regular effects on the same thing. See, if a learner uses actually a wrong term, you know, a, a wrong chunk of language or irregular use, then with the passage of time, he, he comes to know the right and a correct form of a verb there. In both first and second language acquisition, the learner uses context clues, prior knowledge, and, and uh, you know, remember, in language learning, context clues, uh, knowledge, shared knowledge, in interaction to comprehension, comprehend language are very much used there, remember. In both first and second language, age is important variable, remember. This is, I, I just even said before, but age is very, very important factor, very, very important factor. I'm, I'm just you know highlighting it okay uh, well uh, I, I think this is a long lecture uh, obviously uh, children spend several years listening to language babbling and using telegraphic speech before they can form but in second language acquisition in older learners learning is more rapid and people are able to form sentences within a shorter period of time um, well, in learning, uh, the thing is uh, conscious and if a, ch if a person, if he spends more time, I mean, so he can learn that and pick it, while there is a certain period, you see, and first language which, which cannot be, uh, I mean, uh, which cannot be uh, overcome. You cannot, uh, you cannot ignore actually the pace of time in the first language uh, acquisitions. I'm taking you this uh, because I have used here a meta uh, uh, language um, things. So I'm meta uh, meta cognitive strategies. Uh, basically, a co a cognitive means uh, related to mind, and meta means beyond actually that. All right. So meta cognitive uh, meta cognitive uh, strategies basically refer to identifying one's own learning style and needs. Right, they, they are actually beyond uh, thing. You are try to know that which effective learning style and needs are there. For example, for planning a task, that you are going to plan for a task in order to make it more effective. In gathering and organizing material, this also uh, 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 this also actually is included in. And arranging a study space and schedule, monitoring mistakes, 
evaluation task successes and evaluating the success of any learning and strategy adjusting all right so uh, uh, these uh, metacognitive uh, obviously they can consciously analyze and manipulate grammatical structure and they can describe how language work this can speed the learning process as well and second language learning older learner learner bring more life and experience and background knowledge to their learning they have more schemata uh, right uh, let me also explain schemata to you people uh, uh because uh, what is the difference between scheme and uh, you know schema and, and schemata scheme means uh, a model or a framework for something which you have schemata are simply put schemata theory states remember this is actually a theory that all knowledge is organized into units all right with these units of knowledge our schemata is stored in information a, sch a schema then is a generalized uh you know uh schema is a in a, 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 a unit and schema is to uh, what is it a schema is a generalized description or conceptual system for understanding knowledge how knowledge is represented and how it is used all right so uh, basically we have information about language you know uh, and we know that actually that is stored in our schemata and schemata uh, there is a uh, which is stored in shape of units and then when we speak to in 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 fraction of seconds the information is retrieved and thus we, it helps us to speak and produce and you know listen uh, comprehend language almost everyone requires the first language but not everyone requires a second language this is a biggest uh, a difference you, you you must look at this first language is necessary for everyone right and then if first language is properly i mean um, uh, master and god you know then it helps in second language we have children all children we have i mean we have uh, the case of genie who was uh, uh, you know who was uh, shut actually in a room for about 12 or 13 years and then when she was recovered actually by some organization and then she couldn't speak and she couldn't even learn even the second language and the first language as well and we have even the victor case i mean the, the, when the uh, you know like even the stars and you see uh, you must have um, uh, watched actually tarzan movies there tarzan is basically human but he uh, gets stranded you see in the forest and he loses contact actually with the humans and he lives in the proximity with animals and thus he picks up their languages and the animal language you know that is very limited and restricted like grunts and you know certain specific sounds so after that when these children are uh, they they are recovered you see then uh, they uh, do i mean uh, when they they recover so obviously uh, they find it very hard to do and then uh, language production that has been talked in the previous lecture that uh, productions uh, remember of spoken and written language is called productions all right and it describes uh, stages between uh, having a concept into linguistic form um and then speech production obviously that how do people produce actually language right and how do they try to convey their meanings uh, which should be comprehensible to others so this all comes in language pr productions all right uh, basically it refers how humans use remember uh, language productions uh, how language words uh, to communicate ideas and feelings and how such communications are understood so this is actually basically human language production uh, in simple words it is how the brain creates remember how the brain creates a uh, uh, creates and understand language this is actually productions all right um then we have sub levels of speech productions remember we have sub level of speech productions there are uh, conceptualizations all right uh, formulations uh, articulations and self monitoring so i'm going to quickly because uh, uh, because i uh, you know i uh, i spoke uh, at least for 54 minutes 
and around about you know 10 GB or uh, 1 GB something like that so uh, this uh, second part is going to be more I mean exhaustive uh, well a uh, leverage model who is given this model that uh, conceptualizations uh, what is this uh, what we wish to communicate this you know the concept comes in our mind formulation which formulate the thoughts into linguistic plan all right an articulation which executes the plan through biological speech system and then self-monitoring monitoring the speech whether it is what we intended to say uh, what we intend uh, how we intended uh, right I mean it it, it 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 looks at whether what we really wanted to communicate is uh, truly being expressed or not all right and and then uh, this David McNeil models we have another models uh, this David McNeil models which uh, American psychologist who gave this model he focuses on speech first conceptualized in human mind he claimed that syntactic thought thoughts in image synth syntactic means uh, grammatical and imagist thoughts I mean uh, to uh, which have also got some images for example when we think of something so uh, uh, I mean uh, a thought uh, in a graphic forms comes in our mind so uh, uh, then speech conceptualization syntactic talks and he talks about this for example uh, uh, where is my briefcase so with this particular word the concept of briefcase comes to you and that is your briefcase this is when a person went to the briefcase and the same when he says theirs so uh, obviously uh, you see um, there are three inside of production processes um, uh, what are the insights which which uh, I mean makes you to do this production it demonstrates the speaker or constantly self-editing right it suggests the speaker are intuitively sensitive to what stage of production process when awry awry means strange and you know it's uh, it's uh, literal meaning is the uh, sudden spill of anger and if indeed a mistake was made there is a distinction between performance and an example uh, you see here you for example I think uh, cause uh, just oh so uh, is very much there you see here all right and now during my um, during my uh, speech you you see different gaps and di different things okay uh, now uh, these terms are briefly explained to you people formulation is the eventual outpick of speech all right um, speech conceptualization and gestures plays a functional role in formulation of speech all right um, see uh, this this I mean which you have different things over there right lint term memory resources are thought to be necessary for conceptualization and verbal so uh, you see here what exactly happens uh, I mean, uh, from thought to speech or written text, uh, like uh, you see, uh, uh, conceptualization is there, right? S uh, slips of the tongues may be there. Then formulating an articulation take place. So when this place uh, 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 take place, so I, I mean something may may be perceived by your mind, but it may not be articulated are formulated in the same way and then for example if something is wrong some mistakes come so there is a self monitoring means a corrector is there which corrects the language for example you might have heard people I mean they when they speak so when they speak wrong so obviously um, uh, when they speak wrong so obviously they they then they, they try to uh, correct self they correct it uh, you know by their own selves then we have sponerism sponerism you must be aware uh, aware of this term I think I used it in the last lecture as well the term is introduced by Dr. William Spooner alright uh, see here uh, his a little bit by Spoonerisms are speech error in which the initial letter are letters of two or more are switched so uh, it's too hard so I'm going to uh, switch on the fan I just switch on the fan because I'm sweating here I just switch off the fan in order to let you uh, uh, clearly uh, convey my expressions you know so uh, major types of uh, slips of time uh, the error appear at all level phoneme morpheme and world uh, level all right you know phoneme uh, obviously you must be uh, you must be aware of this term morpheme uh, and 
um, actually phoneme is the smallest uh, contrastive unit at sound level and morpheme at word level all right uh, and uh, the types uh, for example shifts uh, shift is there you, you you find here the example for example that's so she'll be ready in case she decide to hit so you you, you hear you, you I mean decide to hit it so the is actually I mean the the you know the the is of decide is shift to hits all right so this type of this is called shifting so uh, decides to hit hona chahiye you know while uh, here again we have exchange fancy getting your moral uh, renos getting your nose remoral all right uh, so confusion and mistake anticipation bake my big my bike so instead of uh, take my bike all right and then preservations uh, another kind of um, thing he pull a pension pension there is no such word pension this is actually used for uh, you know this is actually for tantrum all right tantrum means extreme um, uh, extreme spill of anger addition i didn't explain this clearly fully so here mistakes clearly fully this is not clearly fully this is carefully all right so these mistakes do do open up uh, deletions uh, i'll just get up and mutter intelligibly a uh, mutter intelligibly okay this is unintelligibly all right uh, i'll i'll just get up and mutter intelligibly means that you are muttering such a way which is intelligible so muttering is basically unintelligible substitution at slow speed it's too light it's it's slow speed it's not too light it's too heavy so you here you you see the heavy on um, blend uh, this child looking to be spadal spadal i mean it's not spadal like uh, uh, that's pedal all right pedal are spanked blending is, is okay so my dear student uh, i have explained uh, i mean this articulations uh, in in the first part there i have shown you there uh, uh, you see that articulations obviously uh, concerned with the sound uh, speech production where uh, uh, this uh, uh, remember uh, speech production which focusly uh, which is which focuses only on when where and how sound in how sound actually are articulate in the mouth and vocals of the humans so you see here um, i have explained this before and even the sounds of uh, uh, for example uh, th these are sha cha g these are actually alveola uh, these are actually uh, alveolum and then you have ta da so za alveola and uh, soft palate you you can find here pa ba by by labials for okay you see there and kurga these are velars you you find them which have already been ex, uh, explained and i i think this is been explained so no need of it because uh, you you are familiar to all this you know so i don't want to just talk about it i have to just skip and you know um africates and nice and flights and later and approximates you know they have been Uh, explain and you are quite familiar with them as well uh, so i i think i should uh, no, i'm nearing uh, towards the close of this lecture which is quite longer but i think it's very essential for you self monitoring uh, as i said that self monitoring production process sometimes goes away and speaker will verbally misstep right especially with regular or more regular and usual form so obviously you find it there so example uh the last i knew uh, so again mistakes is here about me i mean knew about it so this is actually what self monitor and correction self corrections it had left she was so drunk again a mistake i mean she was so drunk so you you find it here we decided to drive her home mistakes are productions problem they that trouble you have with your linguistic a uh, printer not with the original software so i mean this is something uh, with your production printer it is required nothing that something is wrong there all right 
errors are committed by non by non by non native speaker i mean uh, this is not this is quite a generic thing e even uh, uh, native speakers can also commit mistakes you know this is not like that uh, examples are there you can see and use these example yourself and then we talk about comprehensions obviously comprehension is also previously defined a uh, means understanding comprehension uh, broadly means understanding and usually comes from latin term and uh, right uh, ability uh, uh, broadly definition ability to understand the meaning or importance of something our knowledge acquired is the result all right uh, so uh, comprehension uh, strongly influenced by the slightest of changes in discourse with the listener is attending to every conversation we don't hear vowels all right and consonant is isolated sounds uh pa sound is the following uh, you know uh, words that is produced slightly different in initial pa of pool pronounced with a pucker lips but the same pa in p is spoken with a lip spread so obviously a comprehension that uh, i mean obviously is, is very uh, much there the main feature which english speaker attend to is the voice onset timing of initial consonant and the most significant difference in english consonant like pa and pa is the length of time so uh, obviously the length of time it, it counts as well and uh, word comprehensions you see word comprehension mean understanding when you lack comprehension of a difficult word so you will likely uh, to need to look up its definition in use in a cool either you ask somebody or you go and consult a dictionary all right uh, comprehension actually comes from the latin term comprehensions which means a seizing means you see something you get it you you get something you know and uh, obviously a uh, representing uh, representations of meaning of words comprehension so there are certain theories uh, i'm going to finish uh, this theory will be uh, if if need be they will be discussed actually and uh, you know in uh, detail later on uh, but i'm going to take you basically uh, you know the definitions of these theories so that you can understand them all right um like uh, for example this reference theory try to understand this reference theory uh, reference uh, theory uh, actually uh, reference theory uh, a direct reference theory also called referentialism uh, remember I, i may ask you in this in, in the quiz Ref referentialism or referential realism all right is a theory of language that claims Uh, that claims uh, that the meaning of a word or expression lies in what it points out in the word the object denoted by a word is called its referent i i, I think uh, you understand it now uh, then prototype prototype theory is a mode of integrated categorization in in cognitive science where um where some members of a conceptual categories are more central than others uh in this theory uh, any given concept in any given um you know in 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 any given living has a real world i mean uh, prototype means that uh, categorizations are made like for example bird so the bird features are given very much there that uh, a bird which is uh, wings which can fly which can lay eggs and when this and blah blah so that would be a typical uh, a man representing uh, A member of that proto, uh, typical theory but uh, at the other end we can also the ostrich ostrich is a super but that actually uh, uh, that is actually the superficial member of that group so prototypical means that you have a prototype you have actually a model and a prototype there and then the de decomposition theory well this is sem semantic uh, uh, decomposition Uh, which is natural language processing a semantic decomposition is an algorithm 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 that uh, breaks down the meanings of phrases or concept into lesser complex means you you decompose you try to deconstruct actually a certain thing and you try to understand it um so my dear student uh, i think uh, it's uh, enough for today because it's been a long lecture and i hope that you would certainly 
give uh, full attention and full uh, I mean uh, full attention to your this uh, um, lecture and hope that you will listen to it thank you very much